Welcome back to 12 Days in March. In this video, we will pick up our discussion of oral health topics for USMLE Step 1. In our previous video, we covered the key viral and bacterial lesions you are most likely to encounter on Step 1. In this presentation, we'll continue the discussion focusing on fungal infections of the oral cavity and oral manifestations of vitamin deficiency. So if the NBME includes a vignette where they describe a patient with a white plaque that can easily be scraped off, what lesion should come to mind? And the answer is thrush. Not the bird, but the fungus. Oral thrush is caused by Candida albicans. Microscopically, Candida albicans will be described by the finding of pseudohyphae. These represent constriction bands when viewed under the microscope. They are not true hyphae. And, not to be confused with oral hairy leukoplakia, which cannot be scraped off, but oral thrush can be scraped off. And it's not limited to the lateral tongue. Besides the pseudohyphae already mentioned, be prepared to identify candida by the presence of true hyphae referred to as germ tubes from germination. The laboratory description of germ tubes growing at 37 degrees Celsius is a unique and identifying feature of candida. Candida albicans can also cause angular colitis, which appears as an erythematous and or fissured lesion at the corners of the mouth. Although often caused by a fungal infection, angular colitis has a broader differential as well. And that brings us to vitamin and mineral deficiencies, which may also be present with angular colitis. And by way of introduction, we'll also touch base on B9, which is folic acid, B12, and vitamin C, all of which may present with oral manifestations, including glossitis, as shown on the graphic. So to finish our focus on angular colitis, we already mentioned fungal etiologies. Other causes include ill-fitting dentures, which do so on a mechanical basis and vitamin deficiencies, specifically iron and B2, riboflavin, which we'll talk about now. Iron deficiency, characterized by microcytic anemia, can present with angular colitis. Other features include atrophic glossitis, which is defined by flattening of the tongue papillae. In addition, conjunctival pallor and fatigue may be reported. Another classic, albeit uncommon, feature is the finding of coilonychia, or spoon nails, shown in the graphic. Patients may be described with pica, which is defined by the desire to eat non-food substances. Angular colitis, with any of these other symptoms, is suggestive of iron deficiency anemia. Deficiencies in vitamin B2, or riboflavin, can cause angular colitis, but the associated symptom of corneal vascularization will be a key identifying feature. It helps to remember 2BC, remember the two Cs, colitis and corneal, for vitamin B2. Another key oral manifestation of vitamin deficiencies is glossitis, a smooth, shiny tongue which may also be described by swelling of the tongue. The two main deficiencies that cause glossitis are B9, folate, and B12, cobalamin. Folate deficiency may present with glossitis, but the vignettes will likely include the presence of macrocytic anemia manifested by an elevated MCV and the absence of neurologic symptoms to distinguish from B12 deficiency. Questions will typically include a predisposing condition that leads to folate deficiency such as chronic alcoholism or a malabsorptive disorder such as celiac or Crohn's disease. Insofar as cobalamin deficiency, glossitis and macrocytic anemia are also present, but these patients are likely to be presented with neurologic symptoms. The neurologic symptoms present with B12 deficiency are thought to be due to B12's role in methionine synthesis, which in turn contributes to myelin synthesis. Without myelin, there is a degeneration of the dorsal columns, lateral corticospinal tracts, and spinocerebellar tracts of the spinal cord, all leading to gait abnormalities and muscle weakness. Anticipate glossitis as a gateway finding to the vitamin deficiencies and the many related derivatives. The last vitamin deficiency that we'll review is vitamin C. Deficiency manifests as scurvy, which includes a constellation of symptoms related to the body's inability to synthesize and cross-link collagen. Without vitamin C, your body can no longer synthesize collagen, resulting in swollen gums or gingival hypertrophy and perifollicular petechia, which are the pathognomonic features of scurvy. Other findings easily explicable by way of collagen failure include capillary fragility, which manifests in bleeding and easy bruising or contusions, tooth loss, and poor wound healing. Think about the classic description of scurvy among sailors illustrated here by this toothless pirate. 
So these are the vitamin and mineral deficiencies most closely associated with oral pathology on step one. Angular colitis, glossitis, and gingival hyperplasia are the terms that will cue you in. And with that, let's take another quick break before picking up our discussion of autoimmune disorders and disorders of the oral cavity associated with medication use. If you have any questions or concerns about any of this material, please email me at 12 days. Thank you.